importance of FLS and FES and also FUSE as something being beyond the training requirements for residency. I have nothing to disclose. Well, when we think about fundamentals, we have to look up the definition. And if you look up the definition in the dictionary, there are essential components that are described. The essential part or the foundation, the basis, or the groundwork of a system. So fundamentals of surgery are really the basic steps and the, the groundwork or the framework, if you will, to be able to perform laparoscopic surgery, endoscopic surgery, or use of electrical surgical devices. When Pride Still Matters is an excellent book describing the life of Vince Lombardi. Vince Lombardi actually suffered an embarrassing loss in the Super Bowl, and the following year, he decided to start from the very beginning. He took his team in the first day of the next season and basically introduced them to a football. He assumed no one knew anything about the game and started right at the very basics or the fundamentals of the game. Well, he hammered home those fundamentals and his team would become the best in the league at tasks everyone else took for granted. They won that Super Bowl, and Vince Lombardi went on to become one of the winningest coaches in NFL history, and his belief was that excellence was achieved by mastering these fundamentals, and I think he proved that to be true. Well, what about the fundamentals of laparoscopic surgery? FLS is there to learn the fundamentals of laparoscopic surgery, and the goal is to improve the quality of patient care. It really focuses on some of the basic objectives, uh, basic needs of, fund of uh, laparoscopic surgery, to improve the quality of care, to set a minimum standards for which you should be co uh, proficient at before actually performing some of these procedures, and to also provide a tool to assist in the development of judgment and manual skills, in addition to a quantifiable measure to assess that knowledge, judgment, and manual skills, and also allow hospitals and institutions to measure this and to see if you're actually able to perform some of these laparoscopic skills safely. Without the fundamentals, the details are useless. Well, how does this really hold true? Do we really need to do it? I've been practicing for a number of years. Maybe I don't need these fundamentals because I, obviously I must know them. Well, Hafford et al. actually looked at that and administered this test to a number of practicing surgeons. And surprisingly, a number of them actually failed the exam. One actually failed the skills se uh, segment, but a number of them actually failed the cognitive segment. So these are practicing surgeons who thought they were pretty good at laparoscopy, yet didn't know some of the basic steps in laparoscopy, the foundation of laparoscopy. But after brief remediation, all the failures actually passed. So this really illustrates that there is a performance gap that may even exist in a number of practicing surgeons. Well, how does this translate into how you do um, surgery? So the McGill group actually looked at this and they did a randomized trial, breaking up junior residents into regular residency training, and then a sub subgroup into regular residency training with FLS simulator proficiency-based training. And although the group started at the same level, when future, when future lap coles were performed and they looked back at goal scores, which is a measure of their performance, the, patient, the uh, residents who actually did the FLS training scored significantly higher than the residents who just did regular residency training alone. The fundamentals translate into a better skill. Fundamentals, you get the fundamentals down and the level of everything you do will rise. And you'll notice throughout this talk, there are a number of sports references and, and business references and they all underlie the same thing. The critical knowledge of the fundamentals is key. Well, what about FES? Similar to FLS, SAGES went on a journey along with um, the American College of Surgeons to try to improve surgical training in endoscopy. The goal here was to perform endoscopy more effectively, greater skill, greater safety, and lower complication rates. We needed a way to ensure that trainees were achieving these basic skill sets, understanding the fundamentals of endoscopy so that they could go on and safely practice it. Well, why is this important? 
it probably wasn't that important in days of old because the surgeons back then did very little endoscopy and there was a very small overlap with some of the more forward thinking surgeons in terms of doing endoscopy. But almost everything was done surgically. Well, let's start looking at how those operations are done now. And what you'll see over the next few slides are a number of previously open operations. These were all things that were done and dominated by surgery, which are now either not done at all by surgery or very infrequently, and they've all been taken over and replaced by endoscopy. Whether you're in the esophagus, whether you're in the stomach, the biliary tree and pancreas, or into the small and large intestine, you can see that this list is ever growing, and I think it will become increasingly more important for you to learn more endoscopy. So the surgeon of today already needs to have a much stronger skill set when it comes to endoscopic procedures. FES objectives are just similar to the FLS. We need to find, understand the indications and contraindications for basic endoscopic procedures to show competence. We need to apply the appropriate tests and therapeutic interventions during this to, perform, to achieve per better performance, manage common complications, describe appropriate patient preparation so that we actually prepare the patients appropriately for the following procedures, and also identify diagnostic and therapeutic alternatives. So basically, you need to know the fundamental knowledge of what to do and how to prepare for endoscopy. But not only that, we need to test what your skill set is and understand that you can do the basic maneuvers. If you break down endoscopy into the number of basic fundamental steps, there are only five. Navigation, tip deflection, and torque. And all of these little illustrations here are from the FES exam, which allow you to perform and measure some of these skills. Loop reduction, which is probably the most difficult, both in clinical practice as well as on the FAS exam. Retroflexion, and then mucosal inspection and targeting. These are the five basic things that you required, the fundamental basis for endoscopy. The rest of the stuff is fancy, but if you master these skills, you'll become a masterful endoscopist. So why FES? Well, the number of surgeons in the rural community actually perform uh, greater than 50%, 50 endoscopic procedures a year, a year, and in fact, almost half of those perform over 200. The number one procedure in general surgery in rural practice is endoscopy. 40% of general surgeons practice is endoscopy in the rural setting. So once you get outside the city, there are no gastroenterologists, and general surgeons perform all of these procedures. Not only that, but they often struggle in getting credentialed, especially in larger centers where there are gastroenterologists, because the surgery governing body and gastroenterology guard governing bodies disagree on what's re required in terms of numbers and competence to become proficient at endoscopy and privilege. So this argument continues, but in the meantime, there are a number of graduating surgeons who are looking for endoscopy privileges and are struggling to get credentialed. FES is another tool to show that you've actually done due diligence and meet the fundamental basics to perform these um, procedures safely, efficiently, and effectively. So a surgeon of tomorrow really needs to be a surgical endoscopist. The more you embrace this technology now, the more you understand the fundamentals and grow and build on those, the better you'll be served in the future. The best way to learn is to return to the fundamentals. Well, switching gears now, what about fuse? So the fundamental use of surgical energy, there's estimation of about 600 OR fires per year in the United States. These often result in catastrophic or fatal uh, outcomes because, for the patient. And if you think about it, the operating room environment is a perfect uh, location to start a fire. It has all the necessary ingredients. It has a fuel, which is alcohol skin preps, paper drapes, intestinal gases. It has ignition, which is usually at one of our electrical surgical units or lasers, also a very high temperature light source, drills, burrs, and defibrillators, and also oxidizers, primarily oxygen. 
you put these three together and it's the perfect combination to start a fire. So what about fuse? Well, clearly we use a lot of these um, devices, yet we don't really understand them. The, the goal of fuse is to give you a fundamental knowledge of the principal properties of operating these electrical instruments safely. And again, we're going back to safe patient care. The knowledge and fundamental to the safe use of this and uh, of these energy-based in, in devices, both in the operating room, the endoscopy suite, and other areas within the hospital, again, for patient safety. So if you look at fundamentals of electric surgery, we need to understand both the mechanism and prevention of adverse events. And as you look through this list, the, the number of electrical surgical electrosurgical devices, ultrasonic shears, et cetera, are increasing every year. There's more and more technology every time you turn around. We have to know how they integrate with other devices and of course prevent the uh, OR fires and other complications. You go back to the fundamentals when things start to go awry. And I think I'll show you that things have started to go awry when it comes to use of electrical surgical, electrosurgical energy. So why fuse? Well, if you look at 20 years worth of the BOD database recently, 178 deaths were reported, most of them thermal, um, from uh, use in electrical surgical devices that have led to a complication. 3,500 injuries. Not only that, but if you look at the trend, the trend is that these complications are increasing at an alarming exponential rate. As new technology evolves, as we build more and more new machines, more and more people are using them and probably using them incorrectly or not understanding the underlying principles. This is going back to the fundamentals to try to prevent this so that we can change the steepness of this curve. Well, you think, well, maybe, I, maybe that's true for some people, but I've been using this and I've never had a problem, so I probably know what I'm doing. And this is an excellent study published in 2018 in surgical endoscopy that looked at how good surgeons actually know this, how well do they know this. And a very simplified fuse-like test was administered to a number of surgeons and also to a number of trainees. And they scored about the same in the 48th to 54th percentile. The pass rate on this test was 80. So you can see that there's a number of staff surgeons and trainees that both, even though they're using these devices all the time, really didn't have an underlying concept of the, of the uh, fundamental use of them and safe use of them. The number of the trainees and surgical um, staff surgeons actually scored below 50% on this exam. And the, you can see the distribution of the score is broken down here. So I argue with you that this is a critical aspect of your training, and it's also a critical aspect, not only for residents, but for practicing surgeons, fellows, et cetera. You need to be, learn the fundamentals to get uh, better at surgery. The only way to achieve greatness is to, is to practice and practice the underlying fundamentals. And if you practice the wrong technique, you'll be really good at doing something wrong.